All right, YouTube, what's going on? This video is about how to make your own DIY wool anorak out of a military surplus blanket. So I watched somebody else do it. I'm kind of a bushcrafter, although I haven't been out doing a whole lot of camping this year. I'm busy on doing home projects and stuff. But I saw some guys taking these wool blankets. You can probably buy one of these wool blankets, $35 to $50. This is like a four pound blanket, maybe even five pounds. It's really heavy. Um, you know, the wool is pretty tight weave. This one hasn't been washed. So this time I, I actually washed the wool in this wool anorak that I've made myself with no training um, before I sewed it. And I think that was a mistake because what I ended up with is a lot of bulk I'm trying to run it through my uh, $100 Walmart special brother sewing machine. But I'm going to take you through this. I'll put it on. I'll show it to you. I, I had made some mistakes when I was making it, so I learned some. But I think overall, I took some care to lay out the anorak and ultimately think I did a pretty decent job. You know, I can improve some of my stitching work and stuff, but that was really the first thing I've ever made and I was doing it for me. Actually, this is the second one. The first one I'm going to show you in a second. But I wanted to kind of show you, like, you can take a wool blanket and you can turn it into a wool anorak that's yours and you can design it however you want inside of the pockets I did a double pocket I did this single hand pocket in that kangaroo pouch and then I did the bigger deeper pocket that you can store all the stuff in when you're walking around hiking in the woods and you want to collect things you're carrying your gloves and your hat and your keys and a little flashlight and everything you might want to have in there um, so I'm going to take you through this I'm going to take you through this um, Let's see the best way to do this. I'm probably going to stop it and flip it so I can kind of do this. All right, I'm going to pause and I'm going to start the video up in just a second. So, you know, this, this had the stripe on it. And what I made sure to do is I wanted to line up the stripe. You know, so I, you build the jacket first and then I applied the, um, the kangaroo pouch. So again, like I said, in the kangaroo pouch, there's a double lining down in here. You could, this one is just kind of blank. And the other one that I'll show you in just a second, I did more in there. And I kind of did a little design on the hood here. I used some of the remnants of the stripe to put it here. And I also got the stripe down here on the sleeve, which you, know, you can see. So I kind of did some thoughtful layout of the wool. You know, the only problem is, you know, if you make a mistake, you can end up with an issue. So here you see this pattern, the V, and then the application of the hood. And that was a bear trying to get that hood to line up properly. So the mistake that I made when I cut out the, the, um, the neck hole, I, I cut it out folded, if it makes any sense. And I cut the circle in there. But what I ended up with was an ellipse. <laughs> and that made me have to do this extra thing in here where I added this whole other sections because I had to reattach the wool, which was now separating. It was kind of weird. So it worked out. It looks cool. It looks like it's intentional. I mean, I think the only problem I have is with my sewing machine. You can see that I need to, to uh, tighten up some of these seams, although they're stitch multiple times so it's not really that big a deal i think if i had a better sewing machine it'd be a little easier for me i did line the hood so i lined this with another wool um, and it, it's warm i used some cool vintage buttons on here and the only other thing is like you see Empire and some of these other ones they do a little better job as they when they sew this they actually sew in a little strip of of um, You know like I was trying to do that with this like right here. You can see I did 
you know, I stitched that over so it looks a little cleaner. But, you know, I was a novice when I did this, the second piece of, of clothing I've <laughs> ever made with a sewing machine. Um, the other thing that I did <clears throat> is there is a drawstring that I ran through the waist versus, you know, at the bottom. That's kind of weird if you do it at the bottom, then you end up with a strained sack. But, you know, here, like meaning like you feel like you're wearing a bag. <laughs> so this one, what I liked about the design here is this is off the shoulder. And then I attached the sleeve down lower. So... The next thing is I'll put it on. I'll do. I'll model it for you. And the only thing about these wool is, um, you know, people say they can wear some of these anoraks down to really extreme temperatures. I don't know how they can do that. I mean, if you have other garments underneath it, unless you had boiled wool, I find that this doesn't really break the wind well so it can keep you warm but if it gets a little breezy i find that the wind kind of comes through it depending on what you have underneath it but again it's a four pound blanket you're wearing <laughs> so it's pretty cool i'm going to take a pause i'm going to pull it on and i'm going to model it for you and then i'm going to show you the other one that i made we'll go through that one a little bit voila wool and a rack so i don't know i may be looking a little weird dimensions here but stripes you know this just came on the you know there was a stripe on the wool blanket so I incorporated it into the hood incorporated the sleeves I made sure that I matched this with the stripe it goes all the way around the back so I'm going to take you through process to make another one that's what we got going on this will be my second one I have like a couple things I need to do to correct this one um, but I have a buddy of mine who saw a picture of this and was like hey can you make me one I was like yeah I can make another one I guess <laughs> so I'm gonna make another one you know but these are these are cool you know wool pullovers if you want to make one for yourself you can 40 bucks I will tell you the other thing though is if you don't already have buttons or snaps or clasps or whatever you're going to use or a zipper, um, you know, you're going to need a sewing machine. You're going to need to buy thread. Thread's pretty expensive. When you start buying the, the thread, and if you're not really experienced with a sewing machine, which I wasn't, you can waste thread. The hardest thing probably to do was to stitch in a collar because, I, as I mentioned, I made a mistake. And it required me to have to do some extra work to reinforce the fact that the wool is now just kind of falling apart at the top. Like this, this design was unintentional. <laughs> it was just supposed to be here. It wasn't supposed to have this secondary thing that went up. That's the way it worked out. Um, so now I'm going to show you the first one that I made. And that was a little different. I don't think the blanket was this high quality but I had an old overcoat and then I made the old overcoat as the lining and um, I also have a hood for it which I would have to find and maybe add into it. I don't have the hood for it right now but I'm going to show it to you anyway and then I'll put, add a picture in with the hood afterwards. <laughs> 